Six minutes after the hour, it is Friday. Finally Friday. It's finally Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. August 2nd, 2019, 54 degrees outside. And uh, <laughs> shame and Tom. Hey, Tom, hey, hey, Tom, it wouldn't happen to be Friday, would it? It's Friday. <laughs> Good morning, <laughs> Bozeman. It's a Friday morning. Good morning, everybody out there. It is Friday. Finally Friday. All right. Jennifer Morty will join us at 8 o'clock today. And, uh, Oh, we got the PBR this weekend, uh, professional bull riding this weekend. XL Country will be out there. They're uh, prepping for it over there today, and uh, they'll be live and in person out there, Dave and Allie. There you go. Yeah, you met Dave and Allie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did. You did when you were here, yeah. So. Cool. They're cool kids, two cool kids. <laughs> In, 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 yeah, in, incredible human beings. I mean, it's yeah. a wall of muscle, right? Just, yeah. I literally from the neck down, like, yeah. oh my god. Now you, you like, yeah, you saw their studio compared to ours, right? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> they look like they're they look like they're landing jet planes over there with the boards and stuff they've they got do, over there. They do. They really do. <laughs> got it's all like lights. A, yeah. They got they got multiple colored lights. You know, they're yellow, they're red, they're blue, they're green. You know, we've got red, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I I said to him, "You're in an airport tower, and with no windows." She said, "She looked at me and said because it's all virtual." Yeah. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, yeah, there's going to be a, a great weekend there uh, at the uh, PBR. So uh, check it out if you can. And Sweet Pea Parade this week also. Yeah, this week. Yeah. yeah and, it's a, you know, it's an amazing sport. It, I mean, seriously, yeah. I, I know it's harsh and the animal people. But, yeah. you know, it's a, in a, um, it's a 150, 200-year-old sport mm-hmm. uh, that was basically born out under the stars by cowboys. And, and because they had to... Uh, it's you know first started of course with horses because they had yeah. to tame them, mm-hmm. and then it went to bull riding because they had you know that wasn't hard enough for them. Bull, you know yeah you know, well bulls were doing... harder than uh, cattle yeah. or uh, yeah. horses rather uh, I horses, mean not, yeah. uh, not uh, cattle but, but now with the you know yeah. the way they train these animals they're they're mm-hmm. quite quite amazing because they are the, the, the animals are trained to do it so. oh yeah and they're stars in their own right you know you've got oh, these certain God, yeah. yeah you got these top uh, bulls that uh, you know people. And you only have to stay on them for eight seconds. You know, it's not very long. So, you know, o- overweight Billy Bob, Billy yeah. Bob Bull, I'm going to throw you. He, he's one of the most famous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. You know, that's pretty good. Well, I'll tell you, I, I've about had it with this weather. I predicted we were going to be almost 90 yesterday. We never right. got anywhere close to 90. It rained. It got cold. It, I mean, it sucked. Now, this is, this is why uh, global warming is such a load of crap. Because if you can't tell, if I can't tell the weather tomorrow, don't tell me what it's going to be 10 years from now that we're going to be. I always tell you what it's going to be. Yeah, because, right. Because, you, know, you know, it comes from here. So, I well, mean, I you understand know. that, but you didn't tell me it wasn't going to be 90 yesterday. And uh, you know, I No, no, it, I didn't mention it yesterday, but, yeah. it, you know, it was overcast and cold here. Yeah, so. well, it was, uh, yeah, it, uh, it it was moving pretty good till it got in the 70s, and then all of a sudden the two clouds got dark and thunder started and rain came down, and uh, I think... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> driving home from an, uh, uh, one of my appointments, it was, uh, oh, geez, I don't know, 65 or something like that. I'm going, <laughs> these people on the radio are just going to tune out the weather in the morning because it's useless. Because I mean, I'm getting it from the uh, National Weather Service. Come on. Aren't they supposed yeah, to? Yeah, but, you know, both, don't, both they look out not... the, don't they look out the window? <laughs> Bozeman. Bozeman is not exactly <laughs> a place where, you know, people go out and, Throw a blanket down the wheat field and lay in the sun. Yeah. Well, yeah. not for very long anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly exactly. not. You're not going to do it today because we've got scattered showers and thunderstorms, oh. mainly after 4 p.m. So you'll have that for your commute home. Uh, some of the uh, storms could produce gusty winds and uh, increasing clouds uh, high near 89. Yeah, I'll believe that when I see it. It's 54. Uh-huh. It's 54 right now. So... Uh, I don't know. Chance of precepts about 30%. That means it's like 90%. So be ready for it. Tonight, scattered showers and thunderstorms mainly before 9 p.m. Some of the storms could produce gusty winds and uh, 
low over around 56. And um, <laughs> from, from our text line, I'm a whiner. <laughs> Again, I'm whining here, about no. the weather. I'm not whining about what the weather is. I'm whining about that. I, that, that these guys can't predict it accurately. That's what I'm whining about. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not. I'm not upset because it's raining or it's uh, overcast or thunder or lightning or whatever. But uh, yeah, the uh, <laughs> yeah, a uh, chance of precip after nine o'clock will <laughs> be forty percent. So I don't know. We'll see how that goes. All right, uh, temperatures uh, for the rest of the week, if you really care. Uh, what is it? 85 tomorrow and sunny for, uh, and uh, same on uh, Sunday for the Potato Fest. Um, or is that next week? That's next week, I think. That's like, next yeah, week. It's yeah, next weekend. Yeah. yeah, not this weekend. So for the PBR this week, it'll be pretty good, pretty nice. So you can go to yeah. that. And the, and the parade, the Sweet Pea Parade. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see, 86 uh, on uh, Monday, and uh, very little chance of rain, afternoon rain there, much like we had yesterday, I guess. It'll be, you know, dark and a storm and nowhere near 86, but we'll try. And uh, Tuesday, 85 and partly cloudy, a little rain in the afternoon, and then 83 on Wednesday and partly cloudy, so that'll get you up to date at least for the next three or four days. And uh, uh, temperatures around the area right now, Livingston is uh, 55 degrees. Manhattan is 49. Three Forks is 51. Galton Gateway is 53. And Ennis is 51. Big Sky is 45. At the airport in Belgrade, it's 51 degrees right now. And we are right at 54 degrees in our lavishly appointed downtown studios here in the middle, exact center of Bozeman, give or take a mile or two. So. Wow. Amazing. And- and that it's amazing. is your weather. <laughs> and, and, you know, <laughs> for what it's, it's worth, <laughs> here, it's going to get to the point where, when we're doing this day in history, and to get to a topic you're not entirely interested in, you say, "Who cares?" Yeah, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> well, our poll, uh, our, anyway. our our poll question of the day is, you know, we got three roundabouts at work in uh, Bozeman, so uh, we're, our poll question of the day, roundabouts, yes or no? Do you like them or do you hate them? And uh, early voting right now has 71% say, yeah, we like them. Uh, they, are, uh, they help traffic move more efficiently, and uh, 28% say, no, they're a disaster waiting to happen. There you go. So get over to our uh, poll question at kmmsam.com or... Uh, at uh, our AM uh, app, AM 1450 KMMS on your smartphone, and vote and let us know. What, what do you think about roundabouts? We'll chat about those with uh, Jeff Krause on Tuesday. He'll be back mm-hmm. on Tuesday, so we'll chat, chat with him about that. And uh, let's see, uh, today in history, what a day in history, Shane. Uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. yeah, let's go all the way back to 216 <laughs> BC. Yeah, everybody remembers 216, right? That's not the yeah. time of day. That's the year 216 yeah, yeah. BC before children. <laughs> well, this was AD after children. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, during the Second Punic War, <laughs> Carthaginian forces led by Hannibal defeated the Roman army. In the Battle of uh, Can, what is it? Can, yeah, Cannae, 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 something like that. Two sixteen, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it was uh, spring to two eighteen to uh, two two o one BC, and uh, the mm-hmm. famous Hannibal came over the Iberian Peninsula through the Alps and mm-hmm. uh, invaded uh, Rome. This was the only real time in the history of Rome or the Roman Empire. That uh, you know, uh, somebody uh, you know attacked him, except for Spartacus, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, with a different story. Anyway, it took them like 10 years to overwhelm him. Um, there was a huge battle that uh, in which Hannibal imprisoned or killed over 130,000 Roman troops, which would be 13 legion, They're about 10,000 men to a legion. It took about 10 years for the Romans to train a legion, it's a lot of guys. But they were successful uh, and uh, beat Hannibal at the Bottle of Zama in uh, in Africa in 202 BC, which resulted in Hannibal's defeat, imprisonment, and harsh death. In other words, they quartered him. 
Ouch. Wow. Well, Hannibal couldn't have been living in 202. B.C. Yeah. He couldn't have been living in 202. B.C. He'd be over 100 years old, well over 200 years old. Oh, yeah. He'd be almost 400 years old, yeah. actually. That's right. I think it's 201 A.D. <laughs> All right. Well, somebody will call and correct and fact check it. <laughs> okay. Well, it doesn't say BC here, so I don't. I don't know. Maybe it was 200, 216 BC. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know when Hannibal was around. I just know he was a bad guy. With elephants. Bad guy with elephants. That's right. He was really a bad guy. Yeah. Must have been a Republican, <laughs> I guess. Huh? Yeah. yeah, of course. He had Seven, an elephant. On this date in 1776, uh, members of the Continental Congress began signing the Declaration of Independence, and we. Talked about that before, that uh, Thomas Jefferson was running all over town trying to get the thing signed before uh, they left for the July 4th weekend. <laughs> right. So they they did sell, they did <laughs> sign an engrossed copy, which is a calligraphic copy, mm -hmm. um, you know, to recognize the declaration he'd written. Mm -hmm. Then they sent it out to the printers, and they had uh, printed uh, ones done, uh, which are called Dunlop broadsides. And so they had one initially done and brought back to be signed. And then they had more engrossed or calligraphic, calligraphic mm. um, copies made. Calligraphic. 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 It's, calligraphic. It's calligraphic. calligraphic. Okay. Yeah, it's calligraphic. Handwritten. Yeah. Let's just call it yeah, handwritten. Yeah, it's handwritten. Yeah, it's handwritten thing. There you go. Yeah. To, to be signed. So the original that sits in the National Archives of what you can see is a handwritten Calligraphic copy. <laughs> handwritten. Okay, handwritten copy. <laughs> From our text line regarding the weather, I mow lawns for a living, so this rain has put a damper on my capitalist attitude. I would believe that. If you're a farmer, you're going through the same thing probably. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So speaking of our farmers, guess what? We have to do the Montana News and Agriculture Headwaters Livestock and... We're talking about the uh, Broadwater Rodeo Association, so we'll be right back, right after those kind words from those people who keep us on the air. 24 minutes after the hour of 6 a.m., it is Friday, August 2nd, 2019, 54 degrees outside. We're looking for what will probably be nowhere near 89, but that's the forecast, so I'm... There you go, and I, I have to correct myself. Yes. Um, the, sta the standard Legion of Rome was 4,000 infantry with 20... With 200 cavalry, an emergency legion with 5,000 was 300, and there were times where they had legions as large as 6,000 with 400 horse or uh, with uh, 400 uh, horses or entire cavalry. Yeah. Um, population mm -hmm. Rome was around 50 to 75 million at the height of the uh, um, reign of Emperor Hadrian, and they had a standing army of about three over three million. Which wow. was because they used the, the the military to build all the aqueducts, bridges, roads, you know, like Caspian way out of Rome. And mm -hmm. They were all hand held, you know, hand brick laid, and you know everything was built out of stone. And so these guys yeah. were pretty pretty adept at it. They they also created cement mm -hmm. and uh, wet cement, uh, wet cement that could dry underwater. Imagine that! Wow. And also, okay, uh, yeah, also the uh, reason the railroad tracks are the width they are is from Roman chariots. Bingo. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember? See, I know these things. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we covered all this before. Yeah. Well, anyway, a text uh, a texture reminded us a legion is 6,000 men, so we appreciate yep. that from our text line. And uh, from our text line, 4788298, uh, this wet, cool weather has not been good for my garden. Well, why wouldn't it be? Not enough sun and uh, too much wet. The the, are... the roots get uh, uh, begin to rot if you get oh, really? too much Cause... water. Yeah, you know, if you get too Plant... much water. Yeah, plants grow at night too when it's cool and dark. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that it's too quite bad. But if the ground is saturated with water, then it's not good for the plants. So. Wow, it's so dry there. You'd think mm -hmm. in a day they'd dry the ground up. Wow, you would okay. think so, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it yeah, sure yeah. seems like with all the rain we get, I sure need to water my yard in quite a bit. So <laughs> I don't know. 
Oh, you just do it because you want to go out and mow it. Come on, be honest. I don't mow my yard. I have people that do that. Come on. Oh, you do? Of I'm course. So <laughs> what, what do I look like? Manual labor? Come on. Yeah, you you got, look like you have a sit-on mower and you sit there with a no. big cup of coffee and you just rattle around the yard. You know, at 6 in the morning, of course. Juan and Jose come around with scissors and pristinely cut it. <laughs> hose, hose one and hose two? <laughs> yeah, right. All right, in 1876, Frontiersman uh, Wild Bill Hickok was shot and killed while playing poker at a saloon in Deadwood in present-day South Dakota, and the hand he held was? I don't know. His hand was a pistol? Uh, what? No, aces and eights, the dead man's oh, hand. Oh, oh, the dead man's hand. That's right. Oh, okay, I got to wake up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a little bit, this is a little bit personal. Um he was built, you know, he, he died in Deadwood uh, Black Hills on mm. August 2nd. Never sit took with your to, back to the door. To the wall, to the door, always to the wall. <laughs> and uh, went, took him to Cody, Wyoming to be buried or interned. Mm -hmm. And and it took, uh, you know, like uh, 30 years to get him dug up and taken to um, Lookout Mountain in, in Denver, Colorado. Beautiful mountain that overlooks the valley and the city which is where he wanted to be buried mm -hmm. and, uh, was, you know, buried in turn there. And, um, I have to tell you, this is very personal because it was my stepfather's family. Um, one of the three families of Denver that donated the land on lookout mountain for wild Bill Hickok to be buried at. Well, all right. Well, good for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been there, I guess. Been there on several occasions. One in particular was my father who mm -hmm. was acknowledged by the city for mm -hmm. the family having done this, and uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, does it have this yeah. big giant headstone, or is it just a little simple kind of rounded on the no, top it's sort of deal? Laid in the, it's a, no, it's a headstone laid in the ground now. Mm -hmm. But uh, There's a museum up there. It's a really cool place. Gorgeous lookout, gorgeous view. He used to say he could sit up there and see in the distance on a clear day three states. Wow. That's how far you can see, like big sky, you know. Terrific. You can see for you know how you can see for like two hundred miles there. Yeah, know? I can understand that. Yeah, all right, all right. We're at the bottom of the hour uh, from our text line. Well, we got a couple of missed calls on the text line. It's not a call line, folks. It's a text line. So there you go. Don't bother calling it. <laughs> five ah, five two two talk. If you want to be on the air, call that number. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, hey, you don't even have to go to the text line if you have the KMMS AM 1450 app chat. That's it's right. right next to the listen button. Just hit that. and You can call any of our stations, but you can call KMMS and uh, leave, us a, uh, leave us a text message. And uh, we'll be happy to uh, chat with you about that. So, yeah, so get, the, get the app, AM 1450 KMMS. Add it to your smartphone. Uh -huh. We'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. 23 minutes for the top of the hour. It's Friday, August 2nd, uh, 2019. Uh, it is 55 degrees outside. And uh, Shane, on this day in history, uh, Montana signed the uh, amendment to uh, make um, women uh, eligible to vote. That's correct. Hundred years ago, yeah, a hundred years ago, baby. They were one of the, you know, final signees. Mm -hmm. The state and, and the legislature approving it, and uh, so it, uh, it's kind of, it's pretty remarkable when you think about it that a mm -hmm. uh, hundred years ago women couldn't vote. I wow, know. yeah, they're yeah. making going to make a big deal of it in 2020, buddy. I'm telling you. Well, uh, our poll from yesterday, who won the debate? Uh, let me let me uh, flip over there real quick. Uh, mm -hmm. poll from yesterday, uh, let's see, uh, well, uh, <laughs> Trump's won both so far, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. but, uh, Tulsi Gabbard, uh, got 19%, uh, Trump got 44%, but, uh, of the Democrats, uh, Tulsi Gabbard was first with 19% and you, Andrew Yang got 11%, almost 12 or 11 and a half percent rather, uh, Joe Biden, uh, got, uh, 7.6 percent and, uh, Kamala Harris, uh, 5.7 and Cory Booker and undecided tied with 3.8 percent. And, uh, uh, Michael, well, I... Michael Bennett and Julian Castro got almost 2 percent each. And, uh, Christian, uh, Gillibrand, de Blasio and, uh, Jay Inslee got no votes at all. So, 
Yeah, Chelsea Gilbert and Williams would be a great ticket uh, mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons, both women, and it'll be the women here, the women. Mm -hmm. But the problem with Chelsea... Gillibrand, uh, is, not Gilbert. I'm, <laughs> Chelsea Gillibrand, sorry. <laughs> um, you know, the thing about it is, good-looking woman, as you pointed out, she's mm -hmm. a military hero. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Trump would have a problem having to debate her because he couldn't really attack her, right? You don't think so? Ex except for, yeah, except for one thing. Well, on TV during the debate, you'd have mm. to be careful. Yeah. Because um, she's a very personal woman. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the thing is, I just don't see Americans, I know this is probably wrong to say, but I don't see them electing a pagan. I'm sorry. I, I really, I don't. Mm -hmm. I just don't see it happening. And an ex-racist. Well, who? Chelsea? Uh, no, uh, Gil uh, Tulsi Gillibrand, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, her father well, was her father was a big time racist in Hawaii. Oh, no, uh, I know. Yeah, yeah and so was she for a while, but she found uh, she found the righteous path. Yes. And is yeah. now now a good uh, non racist person. And and, and uh, practicing Hindu. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but, all right. Well, maybe that'll come up in the debate. <laughs> <laughs> it will at some point. Uh, it uh, will at some point. You know, Kennedy, Kennedy went through this, right, being a Catholic. So. Yeah, that's well, that's true. Yeah, everybody was uh, convinced the Pope would be calling the shots in America if uh, if uh, Kennedy was elected. That's yeah. They said the the, red, the the hotline wouldn't go to Moscow; it'd go to Rome. It'd go to Rome. Yeah. There you are. All right. We've got to take a, a quick break, uh, Shane. There's a caller on the phone, so if you could uh, talk to them, I will be right back in. Uh, minute and a half 18 minutes for the top of the hour we've had a caller waiting patiently along with shane caller you are on the morning soapbox with tom and shane what's up hey this is aaron hi aaron uh you know i you get you, you keep talking about how cute that tulsi gabbard broad is well compared and to the compared to the others <laughs> uh, man i don't know i had to google that i had to google that shit i'll tell you what you google her and you get a close-up of her face, and it looks like one of these barren fields full of <laughs> out here in Belgrade. Oh, yeah? I mean, it is. It uh, looks like the surface of the moon. And you put that on top of the fact that she's a pagan. Yeah. And, and a Hindu. And a Hindu? Yeah. yeah. A, is that what pagan is, is Hindu? No, no, or they no, not no, no that's two different, two different things. <laughs> two different things. It's a, it's a religion. Yeah. The Hindu religion, you know. Yeah. 100, 128 gods, 800 million pagans that live in India. Oh, so paganism and Hinduism are the same thing. It, it's a description of the religion because they believe in gods, 128 of them. My yeah. Lord. My Lord. <laughs> You think we that got? Is, you think we is, got problems here? Yeah. Well, that's that's somebody that would definitely love big government because my God, I only need one of them. You know what I mean? And he gets a handle. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe she'll appoint one to the each of the cabinet officers. How, how good that, would that be? Right. Do you think yeah. America will vote for her? I don't know. Do you think Trump? Do you think I, Trump I, would make that a, a, a an issue? Well. It's obvious in the last poll, uh, her going after uh, Camilla Harris uh, brought her to the forefront. I mean, she was doing interviews all over uh, uh, TV yesterday after the you know, debate I mean, and that night as well. You know, they started out with Beto. They loved him. Yeah. Then they went and then he went down. So they went after Buttigieg. Yeah. They loved him, you know, and, and, and then they went out to Camilla Harris. Yeah. You know, to, to rise her up all, you know, because all of they, they're trying to find somebody other than this old white man. Yeah. <laughs> well, well what will right? really tell what will really tell the tale is if she can uh, earn, if she can get enough money and uh, the polls to get into the next debate, uh, because there's going to be about eight of the 20 uh, that are going to make it. I think there's That's there's right. six or seven that already have, you know, they've got uh, the bigger folks uh uh bernie and warren and uh those guys will be there i'm surprised beto's in that group too he's already made it into september i don't i don't understand they, how but well, i think raise the money and i'm sure yeah, he'll cory booker's the there and uh, camilla harris is there but uh the rest of them and and if telsey makes it in there um it might be interesting to see where she lands she i i don't think she's gonna be the nominee but um if i, I, if I were if I were 
if I were a Democrat, let's mm-hmm. say, you know, I was a Bozemanite Democrat. Yeah. I would think, you know, and, and a, a drinker of the Kool-Aid as well. Yeah. Because there's some Democrats that, that just don't, you know, this whole LGBT whatever stuff, right, all yeah. that, that it doesn't sure. fly with them. But if I was one of the indoctrinated ones, that Kamala Harris would be the one uh, for me just because she is she is a prime candidate for managing a broom factory <laughs> and yeah. that kind of, yeah. that kind of yeah. attitude and personality gets stuff done in Washington. Yeah. But I don't mm-hmm. think that America is ready for another president from Hawaii. And the last one mm-hmm. totally screwed this country up and yeah. gave us Trump. Yeah. So and, they they may, and they may not, you know, that's, that's what I'm saying. I you know, would, I would, right? I would agree Booker, with you. When, yeah. I would okay. agree with you on Camilla Harris because uh, she is, in my view, the typical liberal. She is. Yeah. She is. Yeah. And Abrasive, than rude, that and... uh, you know, interrupts yeah. you. Uh, I, it's my way or the highway. Uh, no matter what you say about me, uh, you know, I'm going to call you a name or accuse you of, uh, you know, whatever. And, uh, right. yeah, she's, she's, she, if, if you're, you know, if you're a liberal, that's, uh, that's pretty that's totally, totally intolerant. Yep, yeah. Totally intolerant. Yeah. Totally intolerant. Anyway, I was going to say. I, if if I, I don't had been Biden, they... when Booker made that comment about the Kool Aid, yeah, you know, you, you're drinking the Kool Aid without knowing the flavor, yeah. I I, I would have looked at Booker and said, I'm sorry, I know what color of Kool Aid I like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, hey, you guys have a good day. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Aaron. Bye bye. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, uh, you may be right, Shane. Uh, this may be an open convention. Well, I think it's going to be, yeah. Because I mean, when, when Michael you, Moore comes out yesterday yeah. and suggests that um, Michelle Obama runs, should run, yeah, I know, I heard oh that. Oh my too. gosh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you know, that's as bad as them on both nights, you know, commenting about Republican talking points. Who, yeah. whoever suggested <laughs> to use that line, yeah. like, he why would just pat the president on the back, you know, with <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, let's let's just FedEx the election over there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That good line. That was a good line. I heard on the news the other night that when Mondale was running against uh, uh, Reagan, <laughs> one of the questions they asked on the poll, should we even have an election? And 90% yeah. of the people said, no, we don't need it. Because <laughs> Mondale re- knew right there, but uh, he was going to have to take one for the team. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. And, and the, the best line of the debate was the acu- either the comments about Reagan's age and he said, you know, with, I'm not going to discuss age, nor am I going to discuss the, the youthfulness and lack of experience my opponent has. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which all these people have. Well, look, I, in all of this, I, I go back to, and I, I will reiterate again, uh, President Obama did six interviews with 60 minutes while he was in the White House. Go look at them. Mm-hmm. Go look at them and see what he said about his, not his failure, but not knowing what he was doing literally admits in all of those interviews and you know the mm-hmm. first one uh, he admitted it took him two years to settle in so to speak right yeah well he was in congress for like 10 minutes yeah i know yeah i mean they oh, well, no. <laughs> yeah. that, that, does that include his bathroom yeah. rest <laughs> well uh, what's his name uh Blagov- blagovich went to a prison selling his selling the seat you That's know right. and they, yeah <laughs> And they tried to run, uh, oh, gosh, who was the black guy they tried to run before Obama in there? I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but, yeah. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, they put uh, uh, Obama in there, and he won yeah. that won that seat and then ran for president. And, of course, why would you not elect the first black, black president? I mean, Well, the on. other problem that Harris is going to have is about her appointment. Because, you know, Slick Willie that ran the house in, in, mm-hmm. in California for 20 years apparently had an affair with her and pushed to have her, mm-hmm. you know, replace. Uh, yeah. Who did she, what was her name? The gal that she replaced the senator that had been there like for 30 years? No, oh, I don't know. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter. But, yeah, she, re, she was picked to replace and then, you mm-hmm. know, won the election. But uh, be interesting to see how this all shapes out. It's fun. It's great watching it. Yeah. I think it's good. I think it's Sometimes mm-hmm. it's good television. A lot of times it's boring, but <laughs> well, well, politics is pretty boring to begin with. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is. Well, yeah. you know, when when 
when you know people are standing up there telling you what they think you want to hear rather than what they what they think or feel exactly then you you know i mean i I don't think any i don't think anybody was snowed by anything anybody said in this debate or uh you know in any debate for that matter for uh, either party but uh well, know. Harris fell apart when she got questioned about, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, her issue with uh, Attorney General of California. I mean, yeah. Kelsey did a good job of mm-hmm. yeah, she did. Whiting. Yeah, she didn't look that strong when somebody took her on with something that was real. She could, she did, you know, she did mm-hmm. not answer, deal yeah. with it. Yeah. Well, very bad. yeah, the, yeah she came that. prepared, and that may have been a uh, that may have been a. Uh, a deal made with Biden. Hey, can uh, you know? I'm not going to take her on, but you can take her on. Of course. <laughs> so I don't know if they make those deals or not, but uh, I think I would call somebody, and she'd be a, an ideal one that you can't come back on her too hard because she's a military veteran and she's a woman and she's you know all this stuff. So anyway, uh, we got to take another break, and we'll be back in 90 seconds. So stay tuned. Seven minutes for the top of the hour. It's Friday, August 2nd, 2019, 55 degrees outside. We're looking for a high in the 80s. Whether we'll make it or not, who knows? Well, you don't know, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I went in uh, yesterday to, uh, I had to get my uh, yearly hearing test for the VA. You know, you go in the room and they give you a you know, headphones and you, yeah. can you recognize the words and this and that and whatever? Yeah. They, yeah, they have all the sounds and everything. So, but, uh, went in there, it's all nice and sunny, uh, come out and <laughs> it's, it looks like it's nine o'clock at night. Yeah, <laughs> the clouds right. are there. It's raining. <laughs> yeah. You, you went in and sat down, thought you could hear and walked out and said, you know, the doctor said you're deaf, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> and you had the weather to go with it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the, for the benefit of any veterans out there that don't know, uh, and I didn't, um, the uh, VA will uh, give you hearing aids, and they're a state of the art too. They're the good, uh, they're the good ones, and uh, glasses too. I get my glasses from the VA. They give you the test and send you the glasses, and it's a pretty good deal. So as yeah. they should. And I, I only thought that stuff was available if you were a lifer. You know, that you had to put in thirty years or whatever to get that stuff, but you don't. Not for you, my friend. You are a great American hero, and we're all very grateful for what you've done and the service you provide your country. We love you. Amen. Well, <laughs> let's not let's not go overboard. <laughs> I can go overboard any any, any way I want to to recognize your service to your country. I think it's phenomenal. All right. But, uh, you're very humble, and that's why you're laughing. But yeah. people will call as well as me and say thank you very much. All right. All right. If you if you uh, if you say so. <laughs> well, uh, after watching uh, two nights of The Walking Dead, it was refreshing <laughs> to see uh, <laughs> to see Trump last night. Actually, I I am still amazed at the crowds this guy draws. Unbelievable! Twenty thousand I mean, people. Tom. And and Fox, I think, was the only one that carried it. I'm flipping yeah. around the channels, and uh, nobody else has got it on, of course. So uh, you know, it's not worth. But nobody watches those not, channels. Not worth anyway. their time, but. Unbelievable the number of people that turn out for this guy. It's just uh, amazing, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, lying amateur gynecologist, come on. <laughs> well, the remarkable thing is last night, Baltimore's now opened the door to him. Now he's going to start, and he did last night, you know, what he yeah. went on about Chicago and he went mm-hmm. on about uh, San yeah. Francisco and LA. Yeah. It's going to now, it's going to be part of his stump speech, and he's going to come back to. What have you got to lose? Look at what they're doing. Well, you yeah. Know, seriously. Well, that's the thing. I, I don't understand why these people in Chicago keep voting Democrat when their their city's trashed, uh, Seattle's wow. trashed, uh, L.A.'s trashed, San Diego. Um, you know, San Diego's doing a little something about it, at least. They're, they've got some programs that are trying to get people out of tents, or these other cities are just coordinating off areas where they can where they can pitch their tents. <laughs> you know, and, 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 you know, we've talked about this, the party of slavery, civil mm-hmm. war, Jim Crow, you know, preventing blacks from voting, you mm-hmm. know, and attacking people for what they're guilty of. And then yeah. you realize, which I did last night, mm-hmm. that, you know, the whole inner city thing was if you don't vote for us, the Republicans, which there aren't any, will vote against you. So they keep taking control of these cities for 50 years now because 
Yeah. No, no Republicans run against them because they call them racist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and they're, they're going to take mm -hmm. away everything. With, but basically, they they've made these minorities in these inner cities basic, basically mm -hmm. uh, in need of them and all the benefits they provide. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it, it's it's uh, you know it's uh, it you know, uh, yeah. servitude. It's servitude. It's you, you know, urban servitude. All right. That. Uh, let's go to our text line, uh, 478-8298. Uh, everyone loves a good circus, Trump rally. And, uh, well, it certainly has a circus atmosphere to it because everybody is happy to be there. That's right. And thousands waiting outside. I think, I think that place holds like 17,000 or something like that. I don't 20, know. 20,000, uh, they say. Well, I don't know what it is, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really it's matter what the number full. is. Yeah, it's it does. Full. That's yeah, what I was going to say. Yeah, it doesn't really matter what the number is. Uh, the thing is full, so. And, and people are having as much fun as they are at a game. You know, they're doing the raise your arms and go around. I mean, mm -hmm. they're cheering, they're laughing, mm -hmm. and having a good time. You know, yeah. somebody somebody stands up with a, you know, a sign on a piece of cloth, and everyone has a fun time booing them. And, mm -hmm. and you know, it's it's yeah. it's yeah. People love that atmosphere. It's very positive. Yeah. Lots of energy. Yeah. Well, the guy, uh, in case you didn't watch it, the guy stood up and he had this, uh, what looked like a bed sheet or a small bed sheet, I yeah. guess, with uh, uh, immigrants built this country. And that's absolutely true. Immigrants did build this country, but they came in legally. You know, they came in through Ellis Island. They were quarantined. They were checked out. They had sponsors, you know, so, and, and, you know. But as we talk, yeah, as you, we talked and he referenced, uh, you know, uh, 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 Jonestown, right, or that he was at, which we talked about. Mm -hmm. James, you know, every Jamestown. White... Jamestown, thank you. I Not Jonestown, it. yeah. Jonestown, that's everybody wrong, died. Wrong, well, everybody right. died Jamestown. but one, I think. Yeah. <laughs> they did both yeah. places. But anyway, the point <laughs> is, all the white people that came to Jamestown signed indentured <laughs> agreements. Yeah. So basically, the point is, is all the whites and even the blacks that did end up coming there, mm -hmm. they all started out as slaves, basically, indentured yeah. people. Yeah. So there you go. Mm -hmm. anyway. All right. All right. We got to take a break. We'll be right back from our text line, 478-892. Uh, Justin Bieber fills more seats and gets paid. Well, you're right. Trump didn't get paid. So they all bought tickets. <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah, I know. But Trump doesn't get paid. No, no, the campaign did. Yeah. No. Yeah. But I mean, plus all the information, all that information. Yeah. 21st century. Baby. Well, what I meant was he donates his salary. I appreciate it. He doesn't get paid, so. All right, we got to pay some bills and stuff. Uh, Jennifer Bordy will be in at 8, and we come back. Uh, one of the things that came up in the debate was equal pay, and I want to talk about that when we come back. So stay tuned. We'll be right back right after this. Six minutes after 7 a.m., it's Friday, August 2nd, uh, 2019, the 100th anniversary of Montana signing off on the, uh, the uh, voting amendment for women. And uh, we're excited to be here on this day, of course, and 56 degrees outside. And, uh, well, from our text line, <laughs> his bases love to hear him insult people better than a WWE match. Well, if you want to talk about a WWE match, let's see. Uh, how many people wanted to punch out the president? Tester did. Tester yes. wants to punch him in the mouth. Robert De Niro wanted to smack him. Uh, there's been a couple other congressmen or senators or whatever that have said they'd like to punch out the president. And, uh, and when was and the last Biden, time you Biden, heard that? Biden, Biden wanted Biden to take him out behind the gym. The wood pile, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, there you uh, go, buddy. Yeah. Uh, Trump gives tickets away for free. Okay, well, there you are. And uh, taxpayers pay to get him there and Secret Service. Well, they paid to get Obama there. They paid to get every president anywhere that he does a campaign uh, event. And uh, so uh, and, and what's, and what's your reimbursed by, But uh, they're reimbursed by the party. Yeah. So there you are. Yeah. So that's where the money goes. Yeah, yeah sir. So, all right. Oh, uh, let's see. Equal pay. Uh, you wanted to talk about equal pay. I did want to talk about equal pay because that came up in the first night. I think. That's right. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about equal pay. Uh, they were saying, oh, women make 80, 80 cents on the dollar for every dollar that men make. Well, maybe that's true, but let's assume for the sake of argument that everybody got paid the same for doing the same work. 
And there's a well, law. Well, there's a law that says you have to do that. That's right. There was an, the the Equal Pay Act, 1963, amended the Fair, Fair Labor Standards Act, mm -hmm. signed into law on June 10, 63, by none other than John F. Kennedy as part of his new frontier program. You remember, you had mm -hmm. uh, yeah. FDR had his new 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 society, mm -hmm. and Kennedy had the new frontier program. And so, I mean, I, I, I during the break I was looking it up and. I, it's rather amazing when you look at, you know, basically all the laws that, that have basically been put. I mean, the, mm -hmm. this was covered by the Civil Rights Act of 64, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission Regulations, 1980, Civil Rights Act of 91. Wage an and hour. <laughs> that's right. And all the case law. And mm -hmm. I mean, it, yeah, this this is not something that has not been under law being established. So yeah. it's it's an interesting contrast, is it not? Yeah. Well, so the question is, why do women make 80 cents um, for uh, and uh, men make make a buck? Well, let's assume that women made the buck and men made the buck. Mm -hmm. And at one point in my history, uh, I was a personnel manager for a 10 store chain in uh, San Diego. And if I was a misogynist so, uh, uh, personnel manager, manager, personnel manager, I could only hire men. I mean, I wouldn't have to hire, I, I wouldn't have to hire women. Now, if a woman came in and said, you know what, I will work for you. If, uh, if I can come into work after I take my kids to school and leave in time to pick them up and I'll work for less, if you'll give me that job. Now I've got a decision to make. Do I, on my uh, misogynistic side, do I hire the man or do I save the company money and get an employee that will fill a void that I have? Mm -hmm. And maybe not, a, not, maybe I don't need all, all those hours. So now I'm ready to pay that person less. And there are people who climb uh, power poles or people who tar roofs in hundred degree heat and I'm sure there are women who would be more than happy to do that. But generally, those, uh, you know, going down in a coal mine or whatever, generally those are male uh, jobs. Yeah. And there's nothing it's, wrong with that. You know, and as I, and as I say, one, yeah. women sometimes do those jobs too. You know, they work yeah. on oil rigs and they do this and they do that. But usually women are looking for... They may be looking for two or three things. One is they may be looking for a career. They may be looking for um, what can I do where I can still be a wife and a mother and all of those things. And I'm willing to make some concessions for my kids or my husband or wife or whatever, you know, so. Oh, yeah, for my family. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's where it comes down to that a lot of women walk in and negotiate a way for them to do their mother duties with the kids, uh, you know, whatever whatever they do or volunteer work or whatever. But uh, that, I think, is one of the main reasons that they're paid 80 cents on the dollar because they, have a, they accept that 80 cents on the dollar to make the conditions that they want to have happen. Right. And, and, and you got to separate it out because professionals in, in any industry are paid equally. There, there's... Yeah, you know, the, you're paid by your talent and the work that you do. Sure. So yeah, yeah, it's a it, it's a false argument only mm -hmm. in that. Yeah, you know, you can't cover it completely by one state. No. But if you've got, uh, you know, um, let's say you're at a you're at a retail location, you've got somebody who's been there five years and they've uh, been evaluated and they started at minimum wage and maybe they're up to ten or fifteen bucks an hour because of their experience or whatever. You bring in a new person who's doing exactly the same thing, selling clothing over the counter or whatever. You can't just bring them in and say, oh, i got to pay you the same thing that I paid, you know, the five-year person. That's right. You know, I mean, you, can't, right. you, won't, you won't be doing that. So, no, there's, but, there's, there's a guideline to, you know, yeah, HR. Yeah, there's things that you can can do and can't do. Let's That's go right. to the phones. 522-TALK is the number. Caller, you are on the air. What's going on? I had to double dip because I talked to an attorney about this, a corporate attorney. I was doing a job for a corporate attorney. This is Aaron. And I asked him this question, and he said, no, corporations 
for 90% of the people they hire, he gave a percentage on that. And he said, corporations do not hire people. They deal with people. They fill positions. Mm-hmm. And those positions pay X amount of dollars. Right. And in that, and, and he said that the reason that people, that there's that argument is because there's different ways of making more than if you're, pay, if you're not paid a salary. Right. And, and not a lot of people are paid salaries. And women don't opt for the other ways to make more than. Mm-hmm. They just settle for enough to get by, and that's the only reason. But they don't they don't hire people based on gender, and they just fill positions, and that's so it's all a big lie. Mm-hmm. And there always mm-hmm. has to be a crisis with the Democrats. You never hear about any of these crises with the Republicans. It's like, hey, our border, our borders are getting flooded. It's like, okay, so it's obvious they are. There's proof that it that it's happening. Um, but everything these these Democrats come up with is just a made up crisis. It doesn't even mm-hmm. exist. You know, this, global, this, this man-made global warming, uh, the uh, women getting paid less, Trump's a racist, all this stuff. You can't prove any of it. They're crazy. These people are crazy, Paul. <laughs> okay. Well, all right, bye-bye. Uh, thanks, Aaron. <laughs> well, the problem that you have is, you know, you yeah. watch these two debates like we did, yeah. and they keep talking about what's wrong with America, and, and they have negative things to say about America. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the Republican Party looks out of the horizon of your country and they want everyone to do well. They want people to have a good life. I mean, it, it, it's incredible that, that such a difference mm-hmm. between the two parties. One it comes across about how to lift up everyone, how to improve everyone's mm-hmm. life. You know, how right. we make their life different, pay less taxes, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, and then you have the Democrats that point out all these terrible things that are wrong with your country. You know, bigotry, racism, you know, mm-hmm. systemic racism and and say the things they say about your president, but then they don't give any solutions. They don't, how do you? They don't tell you how to solve the problem. Yeah, no, so that's that's true. Go. All right. Um, well, we've. Uh, I'll tell you, Shane. Over the nine months we've been here, we've been pretty uh, pretty successful at uh, people respecting our double dipping uh, rule. <laughs> you know, and I'm yeah. not. I'm not. I'm not chastising Aaron. You know, no, I'm, yeah. ju- I'm just. I'm just saying that the folks have been very. Very respectful of that rule that's been here since George Carter first started it. Yeah, and we yeah. only have one rule. Oh my gosh, look at the rules they had in the debate. Not one of them followed them. Not know, what they right. all agreed to. <laughs> right. They did agree to one rule, right? <laughs> well, just so you know, uh, if you if you try to double dip. All right. <laughs> all right. There we are. Back to regular programming. So. All righty, here we go. <laughs> All right. So anyway, that's my uh, that's a, a little bit of my rant, I guess, on equal pay. That you got to think this through, as to you know, there's there's a reason for everything. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I think some of the reasons we pointed out are are why women uh, will negotiate uh, something that works for them. Yeah, and works right. for and works for the employer too. You That's know, right. So, so, all right. Let's... And by the way, by just to make a point, sure. Real quick, in um, all the case law that I was looking at about this, it's interesting because when there've been individual cases where women have taken it to court, they've won. Yeah. You know, like Barnes versus Train, Williams versus Saxby, Barnes versus Costco. I mean, you know, it, there's mm-hmm. a whole set of. Lily case Ledbetter law. was the big case, I think, under That's Obama right. that um, they did. So, yeah. Yeah, normally they will because if it's if it's truly, um, you know, that you're discriminated against because you're a woman and they're paying you less without a negotiation of some kind, right? You know, yeah, yeah that that is where it works. So let's take yeah. a phone call. Five two two talk is the number. Calling on the morning soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? Hi, this is Gay. Hey, Gay. Hi. Um, a lot of employers pay your salary increases by the time you've been there. Right. And a lot of women take off time to have children. So you don't have the seniority that that some of the men have. That would be so true. Therefore, yeah. you're going to be paid less. That's mm-hmm. just the way life is. Yeah. And like you said, a lot of women want to take off early because they can pick up their kids. Mm-hmm. So they make compromises for in their salary for those kind of things. Right. So, you know, a lot of what most women don't bitch about, they just go out there and do their job. And the problem is we got all all we ever get to run for office is whiners. 
So have a good day. All right. Thanks for the call. 522-TALK is the number. Call you on the morning soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? Well, I agree with the girl who just spoke. Yeah. That's Colonel Clank. Yeah. Well, morning, Shane. Good morning, good sir. Real quick, I'm at a break time, so okay, go for well, it. Okay, I want to tell everybody out there yeah. that uh, the new Law and Justice Center building they want to build for 50 or $60 million or more yep. is a no-no to me. Yeah, we, we're, got we were going to talk down. about that at the bottom of the hour, but that's okay. Go for it. Uh, well, <laughs> that building that they're in was built earth, to earthquake standards. In 1960, I believe, or 61, and some friends of mine worked on that, and that building's built like you can't believe. It's been redone too. They put uh, mm-hmm. uh, what uh, pile pile drivers in there and all that kind of stuff. They did a lot of things. Yeah, they reinforced it uh, when they remodeled it. The half of it was gone because uh, we used to walk the dogs over in that. Well, the field. thing that's so bad about it is is. Uh, it, it, we have so many uh, things, other things to pay for, like high schools, and then we have mill levies and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, it's just. What well, town's mayor that's calling? Yeah, sorry. Anyway, we we we've got uh, schools to pay for. We got, you name it, mm-hmm. mill levies that are coming up. You know, and we're taxed to death now. Yeah, I think I don't know what you think, but Tom, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we got to pay for a law and justice center if uh, that's voted in. We got to pay for a new high school. We got to yep. pay for the renovation of the old high school. We got to pay for the safety building, and we got a two hundred dollar uh, uh, park thing that's going to be yep. on the ballot as well. Yep. So you know, we where can't do you, afford it. Where do you don't, draw the line? Yeah, don't they understand we can't afford it? Yeah. That's older people out here. Mm-hmm. Whether we have anything or not. They're mm-hmm. taking it. Uh, they're taking it. They're forcing people to yeah. leave this country. That mm-hmm. build it. Yeah. That's All right. My bitch. Gotta go. You All know. Right. I'll see you later. All right. Thanks for the call. All right. We'll be right back with more in ninety seconds. Twenty-two minutes after the hour of uh, seven a.m. It's Friday, August second, twenty nineteen. Fifty-eight degrees outside. From our uh, text line. Uh, let's see. Uh, well said on the servitude way back when, Shane, <laughs> when that was going on. And uh, let's see, uh, uh, Trump rallies have a great atmosphere, a great atmosphere. We haven't seen that since the 1930s. So, True. Put that up. Uh, let's see, uh, the wage gap is based on the annual salaries between a man and a woman over the course of a year. The men were found to be more likely to pick up extra shifts or overtime, uh, dollar for dollar. They make about the same over the course of the year, yet the man worked more hours. The only way to correct their so-called wage disparity would be to subsidize a women's salary. And I would uh, tend to think that's fairly accurate. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, the plane is going down. They get the parachutes. So we go down with the plane. <laughs> yeah, there you go, yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you another reason we get paid more, because when the boat's going down, they get in the lifeboat first. <laughs> uh-huh. There you go. Uh, the Law and Justice Center has been consistently voted down, but they keep shoving it down our throats. They refuse to accept the fact that you can't continue to tax people to death. So. I guess uh, we'd have to uh, maybe go along with that as well. So let's take some phone calls. 522-TALK is the number. Call you on the morning soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? Um, this is Robert. Yeah. So who is it that's telling us we have to take, pay everybody the same, the government? Well, it was in the debate the other night that they were talking about equal pay, that women were making $0.80 uh, on uh, for every dollar well, that men... Yeah, the, yeah, the that government's men, telling us, and they're trying to legislate that we have to do it. We have to do $15 an you know, hour is what they're and, trying yeah, to how, promote. How, yeah. how's, the, how's the government running their business? Well, yeah, how, that's, how that's the debt question. Are they? Yeah. yeah, that's a good question. Do as I say, not as I do. Come on. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah I mean, they're so far in debt, and there's there's not one thing the government can do that the private sector cannot do better. Um, I was going to say, I can't, I can't think of a single program that raises the bar, maybe other than the Small Business Administration, but I can't think of any others that raise the bar anymore. Yeah, I agree with you. Private so, private so, enterprise so, can do it better. Yeah, that's what built this country and this world, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, sure. And the government's trying to tell us what to do, and they can't do anything. They don't even raise money. They just steal our taxes mm-hmm. and waste them, 
you know, it's pretty sad. But they want to take care of you, you know? I mean, you can't take care of yourself, so they... they well, I've done it so good. far. You know, I pay my taxes. I've given people in this country an education. I was but in the you're military. Not, got freedom, you know? Yeah, but you're not taking care of yourself the way the government wants to take care of you. I mean, yeah, thank God on. for that. You just, you can't <laughs> see the error of your ways, you know? I mean, yeah. where the government's going to come in and tell you, uh, you know, where you're wrong. Yeah, well, if we relied on the government, we'd all be dead, probably. <laughs> well, well the bottom line, bottom line is, all you have to do is look at your 10 top cities that have been run by Democrats for 50 years and know how things are going to work if they're in charge, okay? You know, that's it. Yep. Uh, that's simple. Uh, hey, thanks for the call. Yep. yep. Th thanks for listening. Appreciate it. Caller, uh, thanks for waiting. You're on the air. What's up? Good morning, gentlemen. This is Jerry. How are you? Hi, Jerry. Good, thanks. Thanks. Um for taking my call, Tom. Mm -hmm. um, sure. I don't even know why we're discussing any of this. According to Mr. Yang, it's too late, and we've all got to move to higher ground. Yeah, yeah. Get, get, get <laughs> off your butt. Get, get up there in the yeah. mountains where all those trees are. Don't take any down, though. You'll get in trouble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm waiting for my 1000 bucks a month. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can imagine the entire East Coast moving up on top of the Appalachians. And the entire West Coast moving up on top of the Rockies. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That'd be good. Happen. Yeah. That'd yeah. be good. Well, I was, I was, um, I didn't know if you saw it, but there was a headline in the Bozeman, I mean, in the Billings Gazette, front page headline in big bold print that said Bullock holds his own on debate stage. Did you? Uh, I gentlemen? didn't see it. No, I haven't seen that. But uh... yeah, yeah. Well, did you gentlemen hear anything from our governor uh, in the first debate? Was he even, did he even get a chance to speak? Well, he did. Uh, he, he acquitted himself pretty well, I thought. Uh, you know, he's still uh, liberal and, you know, whatever. But I think he, uh, uh, I, I don't think he's going to make it into the, um, you know, make it into the end. But uh, he, I, I don't think he's going to be in the next debate, actually. But the big the big laugh about this is okay trending on Google and Twitter the first debate that he was in yeah every state 49 states the one person that was trending on Google and Twitter the most was Williams the mm -hmm. author mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and in Montana there was one person trending more than anyone else on Google and and uh, Twitter to find out who he was guess who? your your governor yeah. so the people of Montana googled him to find out who he was. <laughs> Who he well, was. I, I was just I was just curious as, as to yeah. what uh, what he was holding holding his own when in, yeah. when he was interviewed uh, the first time he had an interview somebody asked him what are your achievements as governor of Montana yeah. and uh, he had to he had to stop and pause for and stutter a bit and his reply yeah. was well I've been a good dad yeah. which is a great. Which is a great achievement. Don't get me wrong. If yeah. you're a, if you've been a good dad, that's yeah. that's that's what we need. We need more good dads. Yeah. But that really doesn't qualify you, I, I think, as a presidential candidate. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks hey, for thanks. taking my call, gentlemen. Hey, thanks a lot for the call. Yeah, we appreciate it. All right, we're getting down to the bottom of the hour here. Uh, we come back. Uh, yeah, we want to talk a little bit about the uh, Law and Justice Center. Uh, they also did the global warming thing, and uh, at the debate, we'll chat a little bit about that as well. Or Climate change. I'm sorry. I'm behind the time, Shane. I'm yeah, okay. not calling it the proper uh, terminology. So I've got to. I got to step up my game. I guess. So <laughs> step up your game. Yeah. You're too, you have the best game in town, Eagle Man. You are righteous. <laughs> well, we'll find out uh, in the next hour if I am or not. Jennifer Bordy will be in at eight o'clock. We've had some Supreme Court decisions and. Uh, Hey, uh, the guy, the uh, president got the money for the wall uh, out of the uh, National Security or National Emergency Act or whatever. So we'll be chatting about that uh, with Shane and uh, with Jennifer, too, probably. So stay tuned. Um, we got a lot to talk about. So we'll be right back. 24 minutes for the top of the hour. It's Friday, August 2nd, 2019, 61 uh, de degrees outside. Uh, Shane and Tom and on the line with me from Vancouver, British Columbia, half man half amazing he is amazing he's probably oh, all God. amazing but he's at least half man <laughs> I, I just try to keep up with you right this eagle man every day that's all i try to do I all just right try... man yeah tommy go off your morning mayor in the house this is the kmms morning soapbox with tom and shane thanks for joining us taking us <clears throat> taking us with you excuse me and uh 
They also talked about this climate change uh, situation, of course. We've only got 10 years before we're all dead. You know, we've got, uh, I mean, as uh, Governor, uh, yeah, it's Governor of Oregon, right? In- Inslee um, yeah, said, that's right. the House is on fire. Yeah. Or, yeah, the House is already on fire. So we've got to we've got to act now. We've got to get rid of fossil fuels. We've got to get rid of automobiles, cows, uh, boats, campers, yeah. <laughs> those big giant motorhomes. We got all that stuff's got to go, man. We've got to get right. rid. Of, we got to get rid of all that stuff. So uh, I uh, and as I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the show, if you miss the six a.m. hour. Uh, my forecast yesterday was near 90 degrees. It never got anywhere close to 90 degrees. So if the National Weather Service can't predict the weather for the next day, I don't know how in the hell they expect to predict the weather for the next 10 years. So I don't know. Well, it's... well, well the, the remarkable thing is that these politicians are basically claiming there's going to be an extinction event Yeah. if, if you don't do something. Well, first an, of all— An Ellie. And Ellie, extinction <laughs> level event. Yes. Yeah, right. And and so it's a it's a rather sad situation. Um, you know, they accuse Trump of being a racist and fear mongering, and, and yet they're they're all sitting up there and uniformly mm-hmm. declaring, you know, this horrific event's going to occur. Mm-hmm. So they have to demolish. And send you back two hundred years to the you know the eighteen hundreds. Like that's what they do, right? That's what well, yeah. Well, uh, I seem to remember there was there was there was some politician. Uh, his name escapes me. Uh, made a movie uh, about global <laughs> warming. Uh, whoever that guy uh, invented the internet, and uh, Florida was supposed to be underwater by now. I, oh yeah, I believe yeah. back in back in the day. But uh, anyway. Let's take well, a phone. You know what? I, I have to tell you this. I'm, I want to make this call because you were right about China and North Korea. Yeah. I think this is China with uh, money they bought off Biden to get the Democratic Party to push this so that they collapse the American economy and China wins. That's what I see here. That could That's be. That's what I see. Paid him off with a billion and a half? That's right. Billion and a half. <laughs> Let's go to the phones. 522 five, Talk is the number. Call you on the air. What's up? So they're going to get rid of fossil fuel. How are they going to get their food? Well, what that's what I mean, farmers, yeah. Oh, that's well, what we're what talking about, yeah. Farmers use to bring in the harvest. Have you heard of horses? <laughs> uh, maybe maybe oxen, yeah. Maybe oxen. Oxen will work. Yeah. Oxen will work. There you go. Slow, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that'll or, do or good. Or that goat to work finally. <laughs> yeah, that'll work real good. I'm down yeah. with that. Let's, uh, yeah, let's get the oxen back in the, uh, uh, they can eat as they walk. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, the, the fun part of it all is, is arrogance and ignorance is an entertaining thing to watch. It is. Yeah. And that's yeah, really all we're getting. Because you know now, none of this is ever going to happen. Yeah. And, and yeah, right. uh, it's now getting close to 60% of the oil produced is used for petrochemicals. It's not even used for fuel and, and, and for planes, trains, and whatever. Mm-hmm. So you, if without lubricants and, and, and uh, petrochemicals, you got nothing. You have no industry, mm-hmm. you have no clothing, you know, no mm-hmm. paint, no carpeting. <laughs> you got 90% of what you have in life mm-hmm. is gone. Yeah. Well, and also, uh, coal's a fossil fuel, certainly. Um, how are You're you going to, how are you going to run the boilers that uh, heat the steam that turn the turbines that put out the electricity and and make coal. I yeah. mean, steel. You can't. Yeah. You got to burn coal to make steel. You know? Yeah, you can't do it with natural gas. It doesn't get hot no. enough. You got to. You got to have something that gets really, really hot to melt to melt steel. So right. Yeah. Yes, right. Well, oh, anyway. I, uh, you know, as I say, I, I, they can talk a good game, and that's what they do every four years. You know, promise this, promise that, and then boom. Uh, you know, okay, I'm elected now. I, uh, you know, I don't have to do any of that promise crap anymore until. Uh, you know, till my next election. So then I'll go out and uh, rally the troops again with the same empty promises. So there'll be something that I need to uh, do between now and then that uh, people will rally around me for. That's right. You know, so, you know, I got to look good. 
Amen. All right, we got to take another quick break. We'll be right back. Friday on my mind. It's Friday, Friday. It's August 2nd, night uh, 2019, uh, 63 degrees outside. Chayma Tobin, half man, half amazing on the line. Tommy Galoff, your morning mayor in the house. We got a caller patiently waiting, Shane. So let's go to the phones. 522 Talk is the number. 522 8255. Caller, you are on the morning soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? You were wondering what ALC's plan is. Yes. Okay. Uh, first off, the problem with human caused global warming is humans. Got to get rid of the wow. humans. We got to get rid of the humans. But they have to get rid of themselves. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's what her plan is. And so the, the, the transition will be so horrible that people will take themselves out. Ah. All right. So what you have is you have solar ba- you have solar powering batteries made of lithium and the lithium is then used in the water that's how they get room with they when they recycle the lithium batteries they take the lithium and they put it in the water and if you look online you'll find studies that have been done that if they add lithium to water like fluoride it would lower the suicide rate wow so they plan to dispose of those lithium batteries in the water. Wow, they need to add you know, that to neutral system. <laughs> well, oh. just like fluoride, fluoride is a big byproduct of the of the power, nuclear industry. True, and and they now they they put hydrofluorosilicic acid, which is not. Uh, sodium fluoride, which is the good stuff, mm-hmm. but they just dispose of it in your water and they let you drink it, and it goes to your kidneys. So that's that's going to be the plan. It worked for fluoride. It'll work for lithium. So, All right. Well, we'll keep an eye go. and see if uh, AOC uh, starts uh, passing bills on that uh, in the future. All right. Hey, thanks for the call. All right. What do you think, Shane? Lithium in the water? No. Okay. Short answer. <laughs> now that that's a Biden answer. Remember the night the other night when De Blasio was blasting with questions, and he asked him what question, and he goes, "Yes, yeah." <laughs> Just said yes. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and De Blasio says that's a victory for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I don't anyway. know. Uh, we were we were talking about the. Uh, uh, we were talking about global warming. We were talking about equal pay. That all came up with the uh, Walking Dead uh, two-night uh, extravaganza that we had uh, recently that uh, uh, the Democrats uh, working, uh, try, trying to out, outdo each other. Uh, I thought it was impressive that uh, Joe Biden could, could remember his own website. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Go to Joe 303030 something. I'm <laughs> Why would you have threes and zeros uh, on your website? Well, shouldn't it be and, and, Joe for president or Joe uh, Sleepy Joe Biden or Jurassic Joe? <laughs> and, you know, de Blasio, you know, we're going to tax the hell out of the wealthy. I That's mean, right. Yeah. We've covered this endlessly. They pay yeah. 87% of the tax as the upper 10% in your country already. Yeah, I was going to say. 87 yeah. state, federal, local, city mm-hmm. tax. <laughs> wow. There aren't this enough of them to uh, make a difference. No, but but they basically yeah. raise a three trillion dollars for your country. <laughs> well, they do. Yeah, that's why I say. <laughs> but there isn't enough of them to raise four. Maybe I don't know. Oh, geez. <laughs> it's crazy. Man. It's uh, yeah. It's uh, I I'm not sure why they always they uh, you know they were talking about the Koch brothers too. Uh, that was one of the things that Bullock said. If somebody wanted to say, uh, you know, uh, he got ahead. I kicked the Koch brothers out of Montana. Yeah. Right. So. Okay, I don't remember that, but I remember yeah, well, they, no, were, they, were, money, they were going to donate a building. The yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they were going to donate some money to uh, the college, and the college turned yeah. them down. But uh, I'm going to say that's what I remember, at least. Uh, that's right. That's I'm not sure covered. if that's kicking them out, but, you know, anyway. But we, co- we cover it all, so it's on mm-hmm. tape. So download, download, download. Yeah, right? yeah, go to our <laughs> – <go to our, laughs> It's on there, yeah. It's uh, that would be in our downloads, wouldn't it? Yeah, somewhere in there, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that, uh, hey, we're at uh, 200 shows, 
and 1,240 downloads of our shows. That's pretty impressive. We appreciate you guys out there doing that. And uh, also our apps, uh, we have goals here at KMMS that we have to meet. Uh, our, um, our apps end in, uh, our app goal ends in September. And our, okay. we're supposed to do 1,400 for the year. Uh, we're over fifteen hundred so far. We did right. nine. We did ninety one last uh, last month of uh, people downloading our AM fourteen fifty KMMS app. Also, our page views. We've got a page view on our uh, 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 KMMS website, KMMSAM dot com. Twelve months in a row, we have exceeded that goal. So we appreciate you guys out there following us, keeping track of us, and uh, seeing what's going on with uh, KMMS. So. Well, you are the Eagle Man and the Morning Mayor. I mean, the list grows of what you can do. All right. Let's go to the phones. 522-TALK is uh, the number. Call it. You are on the Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? Well, I don't know why you got to worry about meeting your goals because, you know, no matter of time, we're all going to be dead anyways. Well, that's know? true, yeah. Well, as long as we're yeah, here, well, it's kind of nice to be appreciated. <laughs> Yeah, well, we appreciate you, and so I'm going to forewarn you right now. I don't know what you all can do about it. Maybe somebody's got an idea, but I, you walk out that door, out of that out the office, you're in there, and there's a hell of a solar spill going on, and it's going to happen all day until the sun goes down out here. So I'm just giving you a fair warning. Have a good day. All right. Yeah, make sure you plan to move to higher ground. That's right. Yeah, get to, get to higher ground as soon as you can. <laughs> All right, we'll be back in two minutes. Stay tuned. Seven minutes before the top of the hour, Jennifer Morty will join us at 8 o'clock. It's Friday, August 2nd, 2019, 64 degrees outside, and uh, we'll be talking about Supreme Court stuff and whatever. Uh, from last night or from yesterday's poll, uh, Telsey Gabbard uh, is uh, still ahead with uh, 19% of the vote. Andrew Yang has 11 uh, Joe Biden, uh, seven, and uh, Kamala Harris, five, and Cory Booker is tied with undecided with <laughs> about 3.8, and uh, Michael Bennett and Julian Castro are tied in last place at right at 2% each. So there you go. We've got that. Uh, on our today's poll, roundabouts, yes or no, uh, 66% say yes, they help move traffic more efficiently. 33% say no, they're a disaster waiting to happen. So get over and vote uh, for roundabouts. If you like them or don't like them, uh, get over there to KMMSAM.com and uh, do that. Uh, I mentioned our AM 1450 KMMS app. We have app chat over there. Uh, you don't have to go to the text line and dial in the number or hit the speed dial or anything. If you're on our app chat, right next to the listen button is the app chat button. Just hit that, and boom, you're typing uh, directly to us with your uh, uh, with your smartphone. So don't even uh, don't even think about uh, the text line. Use that app chat. It's much faster, easier, and uh, we monitor it just like we do uh, the uh, text line. So. Let's take a phone call. 522-TALK is the number, 522-8255. You are on the Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? Yes, uh, when it comes to uh, politicians uh, giving speeches to, to uh, you know, basically having um, crowd-pleasing abilities, mm -hmm. uh, not only Trump, but uh, Obama in 2008 when he was uh, running for president. Uh, one time he told a crowd uh, when he was talking about Obamacare, uh, he told uh, the crowd that you can stay on your parents' health plan until you're 26, and the reaction from that crowd was just volcanic. It was, oh yeah, he, he could have announced a cure for cancer, and they would not have sounded more enthusiastic. But here's the point: nobody dared make cheap shot comparisons uh, of Obama to any dictator, because that would have been racist. And Obama's on the left, not the right. So that's what I wanted to say. There were no cheap shot comparisons of Obama mm. to any uh, dictator. Yeah, it took almost uh, 18 months before he got any criticism at all because everybody everybody was so afraid of the race card that, oh, my gosh, you, you, you know, if you uh, disagreed with any policy or any proposal of his, oh, my God, you were certainly branded as immediate racist right away. Yeah. That, right. Would, be the okay. only, that would be the only reason you could disagree, so. Hey, thanks for the call. Uh, All right. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, that's true. That uh, 
Yes, the other thing, uh, race was prominent in both debates, um, sadly. And unfortunately, overplaying the race card just dilutes it when you actually right. have somebody who is absolutely racist, then you, you know, right. then what do you say? Well, well, that's right. Mm -hmm. I, it, it's, a, it's a sad commentary, but, you know, people see it before themselves. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's yeah. why these things are important, because mm -hmm. it helps Americans make a decision. Well, and that's true, but I don't know. It seems, uh, um, it seems like they play this card so often that, you know, as I say, it just doesn't have the uh, oomph that it once had. <laughs> yeah, it's like using the word yeah. racism about everyone. Like, yeah. Now it's, yeah. it's a tag for anything. Yeah. Let's take another phone call. 522-TALK is the number, 522-8255. Hey, good morning, Eagle Man. Hey, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Doug. It's Steve-O. Just wanted to make a quick comment. I know we're at the top of the hour, guys, but... Uh, you know, so often, even myself, it's here it reiterated, you know, doesn't the left know, you know, that they're taxing us beyond what we're able to endure? And, you know, I just want to remind everybody, you know, they've got an agenda. It's a socialist communist agenda. And one of the hallmarks of socialism is to tax the middle class out of existence. When all you have is serf and peasants left, you know, it's pretty easy for the government to have complete control of everything you do. You don't have much wherewithal to fight them. And, you know, since that's their primary objective, you know, that's it's pretty obvious to me what they're doing. You know, they, they present all these plans to the public, but taxpayers are going to pay for all that. And it's going to come from primarily the middle class. And, you know, that makes us very vulnerable. And that is their agenda. So people on the left better really think about what they're doing, because one of the primary that things I guess you'd say that's oh. that's part of socialism. Him, you know, is the the fact that there's no, no ownership. Me. There's no me. ownership of private property. And yeah. uh I just want everybody to, to mull it over and think, you know, never think that can't happen here. And uh on that note, guys, have a great weekend. All right, man. Thanks for the have call. a good one. All right, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. All right. Okay, uh, we'll be right back. Well, we got to about 30 seconds yet, so can we get you connected <laughs> up again, Shane? <laughs> yes, I'm back, my man. I'm back. <laughs> Jennifer Morty's in the house. How you doing? Good. How are you? You uh, had a homework assignment. Did you do it? I did. Okay. All right. We're going to come back and talk about Jennifer's homework assignment. And the uh, Supreme Court uh, ruled on the wall and some other things happened, uh, so we'll be talking about uh, some of those things, too. Well, I wasn't planning on talking about the wall again. Are you talking about last Friday's that yeah. we talked mm -hmm. about on Monday? Well, yeah. I guess we did talk about it on Monday. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm old. <laughs> Although it did raise today's topic. Yes. It, it helped raise today's topic. All right. We'll be back with Jennifer Bordy, Law Babe, right after the news. So stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. It's six minutes after the hour of 8 a.m. It is Friday, August 2nd. Finally Friday, 67 degrees outside. Shaman Tobin on the line with me, my co-host from uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, somewhere up there. <laughs> <laughs> half man, half amazing is up there. And, of course, that infectious laugh is uh, Jennifer Bordy in the house. And uh, Jennifer, uh, we gave her homework on the Winco lawsuit. Uh, yes. We have been talking about it for a long time. We have no clue about wh what's I, going I've on with I've never even this. heard of it, but I do know why I didn't read it in the paper. <laughs> why is that? It was, in, it was the week I'm, I can say hell. Oh, where you were gone. Oh, yeah. my gosh. I had... <laughs> A, a deposition here in Bozeman on Monday, yeah. and during that deposition is when I found out my sister was going in the hospital for uh, the last time. Yeah. And then Tuesday, I was in Missoula because I was leading a continuing legal education seminar. Wednesday, I had a hearing in Great Falls. Thursday, I was back in Bozeman for a deposition, and Friday, I was in Billings for doing a <laughs> continuing legal education seminar. Wow. It was that was that was a week uh, that uh, was, huh? and that was the week it was in the paper so that's okay. why i didn't hear about it and of course i unfortunately don't get that much opportunity to listen to 
the radio to us, during the yeah, day. So sorry about that. That's okay. Well, but, well, about the only time it comes up, we keep asking Krauss about it, and you know he can't comment. So there on isn't it. really that much to say at this point, but yeah. I mm-hmm. because it's it's ongoing. But this is yeah. what's happened. It they the the union did not sue because. They might lose their jobs due to WinCo. What happened was, and it, that didn't sound like a right cause of action to mm-hmm. me, although recognizing anyone can try to sue anyone for anything, right. but hopefully you're going to only do it if you have a likelihood to prevail, or a chance at least. But what happened was, and we talked about this a little bit on Monday when we were talking about what the U.S. Supreme Court did last Friday night with the wall, or the funding for the wall, mm-hmm. and that is that you have to have standing to sue. And that is what they allege is their standing. To have standing, you have to be injured directly in some way. Or or threat of injury, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so they are, that was their standing. They're alleging that they are able to bring this lawsuit because they're going to be hurt both by the commute. It's going to hurt their commute based on the location and also that their employment could be impacted by WinCo. Because Mm -hmm. normally when you have something like this, this is WinCo applied to the city commission to build their store, and the city commission, in this case, they approved it. But if they hadn't approved it, normally the only party that really can appeal that is the applicant that had their application denied, and that would be WinCo. But in this case, you have somebody that was not actually a party to the application process, and they're the ones, in essence, appealing the city's decision of approval so they have to allege some injury to themselves to even have standing to be able to sue. So that was the basis for their standing. And what they alleged as their causes of action, and this whole discussion is what has brought me to today's topic, by the way, as soon as I'm done explaining this lawsuit, we're going to look at what it takes to do a lawsuit under any circumstances. But anyway, so what they've alleged and what I expected was would have to be the only grounds they could allege is that the city didn't go through the right process to approve it and so they have actually they came up with which surprised me three causes of actions or I'll I'll call them grounds I guess to make it a little bit more clear about why the city didn't follow the right process one of the things was the very initial review that's done by like a subcommittee they said they did not approve the application and that it should be terminated any consideration the application as it was should be terminated. So that was one of their grounds. You mean for, uh, was there an error on the application or? They felt it wasn't complete. Okay. That there was not enough information. And so one of their. The city approved it. Yes. And that's exactly what the plaintiffs in this case, that's one of the things they're saying. They're saying they didn't consider. They say we were led to believe it would be denied because the original committee that reviewed it said it was incomplete and rejected it. So that's one of their grounds. And then they're saying that the city commission failed to adhere to the city code when they considered the application. So that's another of their grounds. And then they also said that the approval does not comply with the city's growth policy. So it's just a procedural lawsuit, if you will. And those are the general kind that you're going to see when you're talking about some land use decision or application uh, to build something. So. Mm -hmm. So they did allege normal no. grounds. They just needed mm-hmm. to allege some reason that they were able to bring this lawsuit, not being the applicant themselves. No. Is there any information on when this will go to court? or No, and in the meantime, just so you know, WinCo has moved to intervene, and that was granted, so they're officially in the lawsuit. Originally, it's just these plaintiffs, the union, versus and, and the, the city. city. Yeah. Yep. And so, so now Winco's it's the city and, and WinCo are co-defendants, I guess, yes, uh, of yes. this of this lawsuit. And I'll just make a prediction, which is <laughs> mm-hmm. not a far out there prediction. It's very likely. And I'm surprised we haven't seen it yet. I would imagine we'll probably see it before the end of the summer. But who knows? I mean, the lawyers could be taking We their thought time. they might be dragging it out because of construction season, that if they could slow them down. <laughs> you mean they can't get <laughs> yeah. to the courthouse to file anything? No, that no. is probably true. <laughs> no, I meant the construction of the store. You know, that, that the weather would, permit, would not permit... Uh, Getting it started, grow, the foundation would be too cold or... Oh, you mean uh, in the winter? Yeah. Well, it, you know, that doesn't and it would seem put to it stop in, anyone it would put anymore. It, I, it would put it, well, it used, no, I'm... Well, when it I comes to buildings, yeah. they're building yeah, they're the winter pretty, anymore. Yeah, they're pretty much doing it. I'm just thinking of, I, I know you can pour concrete below freezing 
but um, but you know, at any rate, what it is, we're yeah. probably going to see what's called motions for summary judgment, mm-hmm. and that means you're asking the court, you're saying there's no dispute of facts, and one party or the other is entitled to judgment as a matter of law, and mm-hmm. they ask the court to decide the issues mm-hmm. without having a trial, yeah. and you're going to mm-hmm. see that in this case. In, it's pretty common yeah. in every case, especially involving government. Not to put you on the spot, but uh, uh, oh, in sure. your <laughs> why stop now? In your professional legal opinion, <laughs> <laughs> which is I guess do, the only kind of professional. Does opinion the I plaintiff give. have a case <laughs> that that uh, is there any chance of them prevailing in this thing? There with, is a chance based and on the three things that you've mentioned. There is a chance if the city didn't follow its procedure. There is a mm-hmm. chance. I mean, all that then happens is it gets sent yeah. back to the city for review. It's actually very mm-hmm. reminiscent to me of one of the first big cases I ever had was, mm-hmm. if we all remember, now, you have to be pretty mm-hmm. old, which could, we are. Could this, could this, even though it's in court right now, could this application be resubmitted and correctly? Only once the court moves. I don't think that they could do anything while it's filed okay. in court. I mean, they could have one ready and then resubmit it, I yes. guess. But uh, what I started the... to say is it reminds me yeah. of Jennifer Smith Mitchell when she yeah. wanted to build the barn-style roof on her garage. <laughs> right. And we had to sue the city saying that they wrongfully denied her application, and we mm-hmm. won. Yeah. And it's interesting, too, I might mm-hmm. add, because we allege several causes of action, but that was yeah. always the biggest one, the mm-hmm. one that had the most likely yeah. chance of prevailing. And we did prevail mm-hmm. on that, and it, yeah. it is a win. Because mm-hmm. if you drive by now, there is a barn style roof on the garage. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so so it was sent the, back to the city to yeah. reconsider. Okay. Yeah. So for the context of our listeners, Winco Foods, uh, very important, employee owned. Uh, yeah, it's a retail is. culture founded in 1967, headquarters in Boise, Idaho. So it's a retail food store in your region. Yes. They would presently have 120 locations, 18,000 employees, $4.7 billion in revenue. So, you know, it's an, interesting contrast. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting contrast because it's employee owned, which means they share in the benefits and profits of the company. Yeah. Same as uh, town and country. Right. Uh, same That's situation right. here. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. And generally, frankly, mm-hmm. those kinds of businesses only contribute to Bozeman's economy. Yeah. So. Uh, just to bring people up to speed on Jennifer uh, Smith Mitchell, she was a county commissioner at one after, time. After the lawsuit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh. Well, in fact, that's one reason why she I ran, think, I think. I think it is. Uh, yeah. She got a lot of publicity yeah. because of the lawsuit. Yeah, she wanted to put a dome type or a barn type. Barn uh, style, yep. Yeah, barn style uh, roof, roof on, on her, her garage, mm-hmm. and uh, which she did. Yes. And uh, the city came along, the design oh, no, police. No, 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 she didn't put it on until after oh. the lawsuit, after she got approval when the court okay. sent it back to the city commission to reconsider. Okay, so they approved it, and then the design police came out and said, well, that isn't what yes. I thought you were going to do. That and actually was one of the most fun times I ever had cross-examining a witness oh, because yeah? the city's historic <laughs> preservation officer at that time was so... Well, first of all, he had three written reports, and he denied writing Writing the three reports he wrote? Reports. Yeah, <laughs> and then the really fun thing was he said it wouldn't fit in with the character of the neighborhood and then claimed... That the Gallatin Valley Seed Company building, which was half a block away, wasn't in the neighborhood. <laughs> and, <laughs> and also, it, that there it, were it no similar roof, yeah. and there were no cupolas <laughs> on any of the roofs. And we had this picture of one right across from Bogart Park, <laughs> which was right near the house. It was a very actually fun lawsuit. Oh, good. <laughs> <Ultimately>. well, <laughs> now, Jennifer Smith Mitchell was, uh, uh, and I don't mean to talk about she her. She's not no longer that. alive. But <laughs> She's alive. Yeah, I know. That's why oh. I say I don't mean to talk about her. Oh. I was saying Jennifer Smith Mitchell was, and uh, she's very much alive as far as I know. But a uh, very uh, strong woman, for yes, sure. She, is uh, very... she was very tough. Um, and went after the city. She was very tough as a county and commissioner, she, too. she has tools, and she knows how to use them. She so. is t- <laughs> she, she does. <laughs> All right. Let's take a break, and then we'll uh, move on we'll to... We'll look at uh, it, how, what it takes to actually bring a lawsuit. I figured we that. would look at each step. All right. We'll be right back with more right after this. Mellowing out here, 18 minutes after. Oh, the, I love that song. If, yeah, 18 minutes after the hour. Shame and Tobin on the line in Vancouver, British Columbia, half man, half amazing. My co host, and he has a point of order. What do you got, Tim? Yeah, I, I'd like to settle an issue that we talked about on Monday. Okay. Um, I, with regards to uh, the president being able to transfer funds, which in this case we were talking about for the wall, 
I'm I was tempted the, to bring that up again myself. <laughs> but under the, Nas, under the National Emergency Declarations Act, um, you know, there's two types of order, well, three, for sanctions, military, health, and recovery, like in a national emergency because of weather. Um, there's been 56 issued since Wilson in uh, 1917. Uh, Clinton had uh, 16, Bush 24, Obama 13. Carter is uh, one against Iran, uh, November 14, 1979. It's still in place, as are a lot of the Bush and Obama and Clinton ones. And uh, with regards to... We actually uh, what have talked about that before, too. Mm -hmm. and, and with regards to this issue with the, the wall... Um, it was a proclamation because it's either done by executive order or proclamation. If it's a proclamation, they do have the right to move money anywhere they want to. And that proclamation by your president was made February 15, 2019. Proclamation 9,844. See, that's, that's not things. true either. <laughs> he can't move it anywhere he wants to. He has to identify the sources, which he did, and that's fine. And then the money has to be moved well, well, legally assumed. from those sources, and, and anyway, the point which I is what make, this lawsuit last Friday I, was about. I appreciate that. But the, the point I want to make is that in Obama's uh, 2009 uh, $831 billion infrastructure uh, that he got from the U.S. Congress, um, he you know, moved $500 million to Solyndra with any authority and never made any proclamation or executive order to do it. And, of course, the U.S. lost that money. But... You know, so just wanted to set. I just want to give the context to the listeners of what a president can and cannot do, and on what, on under what uh, basis. Okay, and you're right that they can move money. Uh, uh, that's mm -hmm. the starting point to move money under a proclamation mm -hmm. or even an executive order. But it it still doesn't mean they can move it wherever they want to. They still have to follow a process, and then the process could even be kiboshed by Congress, which. In this case, Congress did try to tried do, to. and then he yeah. vetoed that, and they didn't overcome the veto. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, then the Supreme Court came down with the final decision that he could move. Well, it, and that was could, one aspect. Could of take the it from three there. things he yeah. put in the proclamation. One mm -hmm. of the aspects was mm -hmm. moving this money from the Department of Defense, and the Secretary, in essence, mm -hmm. complied with the proclamation, trying to use a particular section of law that allows him, mm -hmm. him, the Secretary, to move money from his department. And that's what's at issue in that lawsuit. Okay. Um, since we've got about only about six minutes left, uh, we've got a, a couple more uh, things on the Winco thing from uh, our text line. Um, let's at the bottom of the hour. Let's do uh, what you want to okay. talk about how to do the how to do the lawsuit. Sure. Um, from uh, from our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight. Can Winco counter sue on the basis of restraint of trade? Well, I don't think they did. I didn't actually look at what the well, grounds asking, were. asking, can they? Can yeah. they <laughs> countersue on the basis of restraint of trade? Not in this particular lawsuit, because mm -hmm. that would have to be a separate lawsuit. If mm -hmm. they denied the application, ultimately, that then, then, they would be back, then. Yeah. then they would be back saying, again, the mm -hmm. city commission didn't follow the process. And yeah, I think the, the texture is saying, well, you know, you're keeping me from opening a business. Yeah, I don't think you could sue the city for that. I yeah. think that would have to be suing other businesses, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. It's a good question. Yeah. I don't but know the answer. What would restraint of trade be? Um, well, the, generally, the, maybe from your experience that because there's a monopoly, some other business mm -hmm. has a monopoly. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I actually can't think of it right now, but. I don't know that it's ever been done in the context of just because the uh, a city government, for mm -hmm. example, denies an application to build a store. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we had another one. Uh, let's see. Um, why didn't uh, Why didn't the employees bring their lawsuit have standing against Costco, Town and Country, <laughs> Walmart? Uh, uh, all of those moved and in, in, increased their size. Um, uh, could it uh, could any of it have to do with the fact that the uh, that the uh, former are uh, conglomerates and Winco is employee owned, ergo uh, much more difficult to win a lawsuit against big uh, big dollars? So no, I don't think that has anything to do with it. And they could have had standing on the same basis if they wanted to allege some problem mm -hmm. with the expansion, say, of those businesses or to bring them to begin with. I mean, again, we talked about this on Monday, but remember, for example, when Walmart wanted to build and there was huge issues 
about right. whether or not it was going to destroy business in downtown Bozeman. Mm -hmm. So um, just the fact that they had standing, in, or at least the court hasn't said they don't have standing right. yet, in this particular lawsuit involving the WinCo <laughs> application, but um, if they had wanted to sue in some other case, like against Costco or something, they probably would have had to allege the same thing. And in fact, part of the allegation for their standing is that it would impede their ability to commute, and Costco is right near where they want to build Winco, so they obviously could have alleged Yeah, I think uh, the spot they're talking about is out on North 19th near Bed Bath & Beyond in that yes. area right in there, so it would exactly. be right off 19th. Uh, yeah, I don't know where I Cat's saw it. Tail, you were saying? I yeah. Think, I think Cat Tail is where I it's I think uh, it's somewhere in here. Where it's I going to be. probably look really quick, yeah. but... Um, they were very specific about what particular, well, the, the mm. North 19th Corridor was one of them. Right. But they also mentioned some of those streets around Costco. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I know they're going to be out in that area, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be visible from North 19th. And I think that they might have to be anyway. I think, isn't that one of the conditions mm. in the city's growth policy that major businesses have to be along? major art arteries yeah although uh town and country i don't think is going to be along a major artery aren't they going to be back behind ferguson farm somewhere town and country's building another one mm -hmm. oh i yeah. didn't know that yeah <laughs> well ferguson farms yeah. in and of itself is a commercial area right so yeah they well that's what i say it's so commercial but i think they're going to be on the somewhere Here's back there I'm, I'm not i'm not fully clear on where they're going to be exactly maybe 522 talk let us know if you know where the town country is going to be exactly Appellants stated again they are grieved persons since, among other reasons, they work or have worked in Bozeman, commute via North 19th, drive Cattail Street and Max Avenue, and have a vested interest in the traffic consequences related to the proposed Winco project. Mm -hmm. So that's what they alleged, one of the mm -hmm. things they alleged for standing. Yeah, but I think it could have made the same case for Costco coming down, uh, you know, you're coming through a residential area off uh, Davis or whatever that road and, is. And or, by the way, that's why Costco was denied the ability to put in gas for years mm -hmm. because there's a specific requirement that gas has to be on major arteries. Right. And that was not considered a major artery. And I don't know mm -hmm. what happened. Yeah. Maybe they changed the policy. I don't mm -hmm. know. But eventually, yeah. obviously, they were able to put in the gas. But they yeah. were prevented from doing that for quite a while. Yeah, they were. Um, and I, uh, one of the reasons, I think, if I remember correctly, it was um, if you have gas, you've got to have two, uh, two ways that uh, the fire can get in uh, to the area. Fire, oh, fire. that might be. And I think that's what it was. It w they hadn't got that subdivision through there at that time when they first started or the the road ended at Costco. Which kind of reminds me, I got to say this, when I stopped to buy yesterday's paper and there was a fire truck there at Mini Mart, at, or it's not Mini Mart anymore, yes. Loaf and Jug at right, 19th yeah. and Main. Mm -hmm. And um, I was surprised I was reading while I was waiting to pay for the paper and it said they're closing Grant Street for years yeah. while they do the reconstruction. I said, they're closing it for years, and there was a fireman right there. He's going, well, that'll really help our ability to get there in case of fire. That's right. Let's take a phone call, and we got to go to the bottom of the hour. Caller, you are on the air with Jennifer Bordy. What's up? Well, I'm double-dipping. Oh, here man. Am I going to have to get my double-dipping thing out for you? Uh, well, I just Come wanted on. to tell you that town and country owns some land out here at Four Corners. So. Yeah. Right, but they say. decided not to build out there. I was yeah. going to stand out there with a sign, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to have yeah. a grocery store out there. Yeah, it'd be nice to, yeah. Yeah, uh, you don't have much out there. You can get candy bars at Murdoch. Well, we have the drive through <laughs> grocery now, which surprisingly, oh, in that right. little building, they, yeah. they've got everything. Do they? Yeah. All right. I so haven't had any problem if I needed something. You just drive through and they hand the you the sack like you get your uh, McDonald's <laughs> uh, hot meal or what? Uh, sort of, yeah, but anyway. <laughs> But yeah, I would love to have. I really miss when the Galton grocery was out there. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, because it's a long way to town, especially now with all mm -hmm. the stoplights. Oh yeah, well, and there's another one going in at Love Lane. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, we got the roundabout going out. Oh too. yeah, that too. What do you think of roundabouts? Well, I think they're stupid. Okay. Well, <laughs> sorry, our, I don't. Our poll I question. don't really like them, yeah. although. I have to admit that yeah. it does seem to make like 11th yeah. in college move faster yeah. or more yeah. efficiently, maybe yeah. not faster, but yeah. more efficiently.
Well, uh, our poll question of the day, 55% like them, 41% don't. So it's a pretty close vote there. <laughs> but, and, you know, uh, I grew up yeah. with some big ones in Kansas City because yeah. they love fountains, and they put fountains in the middle of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's really great when the wind's blowing. And so <laughs> I've been annoyed by them since I was a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we got to duck at her, pay a couple of bills. Uh, Shane Matavin on the line in Vancouver, my co-host. Uh, she, uh, Jennifer Bordy in the house. Tommy Golop, your morning mayor, will be back with more with Jennifer. We're going to find out uh, how do you file a lawsuit. How do you file a lawsuit well, if you want to? <laughs> what is supposed to be the reason? Yeah, what's the, yeah? What are grounds? There? What are grounds to hire a fire a file a lawsuit? We'll be right back. Yeah, one of Jennifer's favorite songs, "Red Rubber yep. Red Rubber Ball." You're really hitting, you're <laughs> hitting the good out stuff. Of the park hitting the good today stuff for you. Music okay. for me. <laughs> you didn't even so, know "If" was one of my favorite songs. Just to update our listeners. Uh, aside from the markets being down around the world, there's a 6.2 earthquake just reported off the southern coast of Indonesia, south of Jakarta. So Ooh, that's man. pretty major. Yeah. Yeah. They have wow. that. Yeah, that'll be a tsunami waiting to happen. Yes, probably yeah. a lot of deaths. And yeah, it over seems 200. like in those kinds of areas is yeah. an earthquake strike. Yeah, the market uh, went nuts yesterday. went down 300 points, and then we got it all back, and now it's down 258. So I don't know. I don't Seesaw. know what's going on over there. Uh, the roundabout at 11th and College is a godsend. Uh, that intersection was the worst traffic jam in Bozeman. I'd agree with that when I was selling, and I'd go out to the university, and you just might as well just go by, by the hospital rather than go down Yeah, that one seems to work. Yeah. I will give you that. Uh, especially coming north out of the university. Now it uh, never backs up uh, that I've seen 10,000% better, and I would I would agree with that. It does seem to it does seem to work pretty well. So so, so where they've had them, uh, I don't know. There, I, I, there's some places I, I don't know if there are enough traffic I would to love to see some statistics, but, though. Does it, yeah. Do they do away with accidents almost altogether? Or? Well, what we found out the other day was that uh, they did a study somewhere that, um, and I, I forget, do you remember, Shane, we talked about it on the air, that uh, accidents, uh, roundabouts went down um yeah, the well, the major accidents that happened with a roundabout were mostly fender benders. They weren't serious accidents. That like, makes sense. Like you can't running. T-bone somebody. Yeah, yeah, you can't. Yeah, yeah, you can't true. T-bone anybody. You'd be. Uh, you yeah, know, that actually makes sense. All right. Yeah. So they do seem to reduce accidents, and I think people are more careful entering them than they are with a four-way stop. Maybe. That's sort of like red light cameras yeah. have been that. Yeah. Proven to cause a lot of <laughs> rear ending. But That's anyway. true, yeah. All right, let's talk about lawsuits. What okay, does it lawsuits. take to bring a lawsuit? What does it take? Well, the very first thing, mm-hmm. and hopefully you'll recognize this before you go file, but a lot of people have it, and it becomes a topic of many in an appeal, is you have to know what the statute of limitations is for whatever you think your mm-hmm. cause of action is. Yeah. And they're all over the board. There is not one set statute of limitations. So, for example, if you were injured in a car accident, and I'm going to say mostly the Montana statutes of limitations, and this particular one is pretty common, but there are some states with different ones. But, for example, you have three years from the time of the accident to file a lawsuit if you need to sue the other driver or if you need to Mm -hmm. sue the state because it was an unsafe roadway, you could Mm -hmm. do that. Um, So depending on what your cause of action is, there's a statute of limitations. Now, some are very, very short. For example... If you think you were wrongfully discharged from your employment or if you think you were the... uh, Discrimination. Discrimination, (laughs) yeah. yeah. Uh, And maybe I shouldn't have thrown those together because they have two different statutes and limitations. But for discrimination, you absolutely have to file first with the Human Rights Commission in the state or with the uh, uh, EOC and then what it stands for. Yeah, Wage and Hour and that group, yeah. Within six months. And and then you have to file within a year in court after that if it's denied. So you have, those are pretty short statutes of limitations. Sometimes you only have 30 days. And so, for example, also under wrongful discharge, uh, you have to look at your employer's policy, for example. They might have some administrative process you have to go through first. Mm -hmm. And courts will uphold that if, if you need to go through some administrative way or method first before you can file in court so you've got to know your statute of limitations for whatever you want you got longer ones just so you know for things like written contracts i think you have up to 
eight years, mm -hmm. maybe 10 years. Yeah. And um, oral contracts, yeah, five years. So there's just, they're all over the board. That's the first thing you have to know is, have you, do you want to file in time? And I will also say this. When it comes to sex abuse or reparations from slavery, okay. <laughs> no, there's apparently no statute of no limitations statute that, for huh? reparations from slavery. <laughs> I've always wondered why are we still debating that after all yeah. this time. But regardless, um, they're all over the board. States are different as far as if you are claiming sex abuse as a child. And to me, it seems like there probably isn't really a statute of limitations, although mm -hmm. there is. And you just have to look into it for your particular state and see what it is. So, okay. But they've also expanded that federally. So mm -hmm. a lot of times you can go ahead and bring it in federal court based on something that happened to you 40 years ago. <laughs> I don't yeah, understand all that. Yeah, that's not going to work. But anyway, so that's the first yeah. thing you have to look mm -hmm. at. Are you bringing your lawsuit in time? Yeah. And then the second thing is what we've been talking about. We talked about it on Monday. We talked about it today. You have to have standing to bring a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you were injured in a car accident or some kind of accident, that's your standing right there. You were right. injured. Yeah. You have to allege an injury mm -hmm. to you to have standing. Now, that's distinct from damages, mm -hmm. which is an element of almost every kind of lawsuit you might bring. You have to have damages. Not only do you have to be injured, but you have, you have to be to, made whole. <laughs> right. You have to have damages like medical expenses mm -hmm. or your quality loss, of loss life of income. was yeah. a mm -hmm. loss of income. All of those are elements of damages, mm -hmm. different kinds of damages. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that that's distinct from standing. That's an, an element mm -hmm. of a lawsuit. And we'll, we'll talk about the elements, too, which are different for every kind of lawsuit. Yeah. What about think. something ambiguous like uh, slander or libel? Why do you think that that's ambiguous? Well, it's isn't it harder to establish that you were you they were, were damaged? Yeah, that you Actually, were damaged. Actually, that's by, true, and it's yeah. it's resulted yeah. in many a defamation lawsuit mm -hmm. being dismissed because people are stupid. <laughs> Sorry, well, yeah. and they get up on the witness stand and say, "Oh no, nobody believed him when they said that about me." Well, okay, then you're not damaged. Then right. there goes your lawsuit. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> mm -hmm. well, that's what I'm saying. You know, if you're uh, uh, accused of a you heinous know, crime of, of something well uh, years ago and i won't mention the name but there was a contractor in town who was uh, supposedly with hookers and whatever you probably remember that story. i do and you know whether or not it was true is is uh, I, I guess did it, it damage that person yeah, at all yeah yeah i i actually i'm i might be thinking of would the reporting case, but... be damaged uh, I well, mean, would you have a be. case I mean, against the newspaper or the news outlets or things like you, that? You would have to show that you were damaged somehow, like you no longer have customers for your business mm -hmm. yeah. or your wife left you or, well. <laughs> or your husband <laughs> left you or, yeah. or you got a... Are you paid? Well, your, no. If you are, had a sexual disease from, are you, are, are you had your? <laughs> that had, would prove that. Or you had your lawyer uh, pay somebody 150 grand? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> At any rate, so yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that counts as damages. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I don't think defamation is necessarily ambiguous. Yeah. Those are the kind of damages that are mm. probably way more difficult to prove, yeah. unless you can prove. You had to close your business, or you lost clients, mm -hmm. or customers, or your what about wife. the what about the statute of limitation on that? Because the customers leaving might not be immediate. Uh, that that might be a trickle down as people well, as word gets around. That's kind of why you have statutes of yeah. limitations. And mm -hmm. for for example, yeah. defamation, it, it's three years, I believe. Okay, it so might you'd be know by that time that your exactly. customer base. If you haven't had damage whatever, by then, yeah. then. Yeah, it'd be You're pretty pretty tough it, to. So. Yeah, most people would probably forget about it rather than whatever. So although it okay. is true mm -hmm. that um, a cause of action doesn't accrue until all the elements have been established. So, for example, if you were the victim of fraud but you don't know it for a couple of years, mm -hmm. then that might be what triggers the statute of limitations starting to run. So, if mm -hmm. you find out, say, five years after something happened that that was fraudulent, then you could still you would have three years from the time you discovered discover it to bring the cause or bring your case to court. So, mm -hmm. so there's all kinds of things that can affect the statute of limitations as well, which may be why we end up seeing a lot of lawsuits on that. But um, mostly what we see is somebody that misses it by a couple days and there's some argument, well, it didn't really start to run till yeah. X happened. Mm -hmm. 
and sometimes the court or the Supreme Court will agree and sometimes they won't. But at any rate, um, that's the first thing you have to look at. And then the next thing is, do you have standing to bring mm-hmm. this lawsuit? Right. So, you know, nobody, not nobody, somebody mm-hmm. shouldn't come out of left field and say, oh, like if you lived on the east side of Bozeman and you wanted to bring a lawsuit about the airport, um, really what would be your standing to bring it? Exactly, yeah. So, uh, from our text line, 478-8298, <clears throat> uh, the question for my favorite legal starfish. <laughs> <laughs> starfish? <laughs> from, from your favorite song. Oh, got it. I, I keep forgetting. <laughs> yes, okay, got it. The question for my favorite legal starfish. Admittedly, I don't know about the details of the lawsuit filed against Winco, but superficially, uh, it appears that it would be difficult to meet both the burden of defined duty and allege a specific tort or damage specifically incurred. Have an often we- have an awesome weekend. Well, first of all, the lawsuit is not against Winco. It is against the city the of city, Bozeman. Yeah for not following proper procedure in approving Winco's application. Yep. But Winco has intervened in the lawsuit to protect its own rights, in essence. Right. They so. want to say, oh, yeah, they followed the procedure. We're good to go. Let us go. Mm-hmm. So um, that that's it's not against Winco. Mm-hmm. And in, as far as a duty goes, that that is an astute listener. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that only applies in certain kinds of lawsuits. Believe it or not, like we were talking about, if you're hurt in an auto accident or... Mm-hmm any kind of accident, really, that is one of the elements you have to prove that the person or entity you're suing had a duty to you. And it's not an element of every kind of lawsuit. It's not an element, well, I suppose it's implied that, for example, the city has a duty to follow its own procedure Mm. in considering an application to build something. But it's not an actual element the way it is in, say, a negligence lawsuit, which is what most car accidents or when you're injured, Mm -hmm. uh, physically injured, that's usually going to be negligence. There's a couple other possibilities, but that's the main one. And Mm -hmm. so, yes, you have to prove that somebody had a duty. Like, if you were going to sue the state because your car went off the road at an S-curve and you think the guardrail was defective and that was the state's duty to put in a good guardrail, And so you would have to show, and it wouldn't be very hard under the circumstances I just said, the state has a duty to you, and Mm -hmm. so they do. They have a duty to make roads safe, and and they actually acted Mm -hmm. upon that duty. They put in some guardrail, but it didn't work the way it's supposed to. Then you can prove that they breached their duty. So you have Mm -hmm. to prove, for example, if you're physically injured, you have to prove the other party has a duty. You have to prove they breached that duty. And you have to prove that you have damages as a result of the breach of their duty. So those are the elements of the lawsuit, which was actually the next thing I was going to talk about. Okay. And it'd be other. Well, hold that, hold that thought because we got to take a break. Okay. But, but um, we'll, when we come back, uh, you want to tease what you're going to talk about? Well, we, that was the next thing. You have to have a cause of action, and mm-hmm. it, there's elements to every cause of action, and so. There's no way to go over all of them. There's a lot out there, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but we might be able to talk about it. Well, we'll do we'll do the best we can. So, we got the rush update coming up right now. So here's rush. All right, we're winding down. Six minutes to go. Uh, Friday, August second, twenty nineteen. Jennifer Bordy, the law babe, is in the house, and we're we're finishing up on uh, how to file a lawsuit or what you need to do to file a lawsuit, I guess. And Yeah, and actually I really covered the bare bones. I mean, you have to see that you you filed in time. Right. You have to have standing to file. Mm -hmm. And you have to have a cause of action, and you have to allege certain elements. Every cause of action has its own elements. You have to show in your complaint each of those elements and why you think you can prove them. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like a criminal case. You don't necessarily have to prove it right there in your complaint, but you have to allege enough to show that you at least have a shot at it. Right. And so, and as, as I've said many times, anyone can actually go down to a courthouse, pay the fee, file a complaint. Whether or not you can prevail is, is the real is issue. The, is so, the issue, yeah. So I'm kind of mm-hmm. telling you what, what are the bare mm-hmm. minimums you need in order to mm-hmm. at least prevail right. on keeping your lawsuit What filed. about small claims court? Um, do, do we even still have that here? We do still have it. But it's kind of strange. It's, in essence, almost the same thing as justice court, but it's got a lower limit of how much your damages can 
be, I think it's $7,000. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing about small claims court is either nobody has an attorney or you both have an attorney. Right, yeah. It can't be one way or the other. Most okay. cases like that uh, actually get filed in justice court, which has, I believe, a $15,000 limit on the, your damages. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter whether you both have lawyers or only one has lawyers. So most cases actually get filed in justice mm-hmm. court. As a where would you... Where would you go to do that if you said, okay, I, I can't afford a lawyer, but maybe my my neighbor's dog bit me or something like that? Then you would you go know. file it in justice court. Justice court, okay. Yeah. So I did medical bills and Exactly, whatever, if they're things. less than $15,000. Yeah. Now, if, if you have damages greater than $15,000, you have to file in district court. Okay. Which is like the next one. So if I didn't have health insurance, say the dog bit me, I went to the hospital and they did a whole bunch of stuff and it and cost you one hundred seventy thousand, yeah, 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 which is yeah, likely yeah, probably, <laughs> probably right. that's, that's, which is very likely that's before the then doc- you can't file in small claims or justice court you say, have to file in district okay court. that's before the doctor sees you <laughs> <laughs> that's why you're waiting in the emergency room. Right. sure yeah, <laughs> All right, we well, need that canadian health care uh, <laughs> one other thing i just wanted to talk about which mm-hmm. is some of the constitutional bases that we mm-hmm. are even allowed to bring lawsuits and mm-hmm. Really, because many times over the years I've done what I call tours of the Constitution, whether it be Mm -hmm. state or federal. Uh, Well, actually, I've mostly done a tour of the Bill of Rights under the federal Constitution. But there there are actually a couple of provisions that have to do with why we are even even able to sue anybody, let alone Mm -hmm. sue the state. Because as probably most everybody kind of recognizes, we operate under, well, it's not first the common law, but the, our common law is based on whatever England did back right. in the old mm-hmm. days. Yeah. And there were certain causes of action that you could sue about under English law. And we adopted that except when either our Constitution or even statutes that are passed by Congress or state legislatures circumvent the common law. They can do that, and they have in many ways. But the first basis we have is Article Three of our Constitution, the federal Constitution, which established the judiciary, and then it was very specific about what kind of cases the judiciary could hear. And so that is the first place where it says, in essence, we can sue each other if we want and even sue the government. And then there were some problems with some of the language in the in Article 3, and so that's how we got the 11th Amendment, which I may be sort of bypassing the First Amendment because that one's important, too, in our right. ability mm-hmm. to sue especially government. Well, actually, the First Amendment applies only to government. But So we passed the 11th Amendment to kind of correct something in Article 3, which says, and I, I'm going to tell you right out, I, I can do nothing more than read this amendment, even though I've actually written a brief on it before. <laughs> I don't understand it very well. But here's what it says. The judicial power of the United States shall not be construed to extend to any suit in law or equity commenced or prosecuted against one of the United States by citizens of another state or by subjects or citizens of any foreign state. So one thing I do know that it means is it was based upon the fact that uh, somebody in North Carolina thought they could sue the whole state of Georgia for something that happened during Mm -hmm. the Revolutionary War. And so the 11th Amendment was Mm -hmm. passed to sort of fix that. But in the First Amendment, what we have is the right to petition. Remember... The First Amendment covers, I think, some of the most fun rights or important rights that we have, like the right of free speech, Mm -hmm. the freedom of the press, um, the, well, freedom of religion, freedom from religion, as it's (laughs) often (laughs) interpreted. But it also has this right to petition, Mm -hmm. which specifically prohibits Congress from abridging the right of the petition a right of the people to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So that's, in essence, you can sue the government. It, for the most part, abolished sovereign immunity, which was part of the common law. You couldn't sue the okay. crown in England. Got to leave it there. Yes, we do. And there's one other source and a couple <laughs> state sources, okay. and I'll have to come back to them. Okay. Say goodbye, Shane. Goodbye, man. It's been great. And look forward to Monday morning and speaking with you. Thanks for being in the house, Jennifer. Be happy, be safe, everyone. Have a great weekend. All right. Thanks, Shane. All right. Thanks, Jennifer, for being here. We appreciate it very much. And well, Yeah, it's been a long time yeah. since I covered just kind of a generic topic. And yeah. they can be important. Okay. From our text line for next week, does, how does Canada feel about uh, U.S. coming up for drugs? So we'll find out.